Speaking of history and philosophy and technique, recently you went about and made a very short statement, but it was very profound. I found it. You're talking about um, how you know the sport of jujitsu is uh, evolving. Uh, all the stuff that are being put on the mainstream, there's a, an evolution in the technique and so forth, and evolution in the interest where people are looking but that does not mean that what we are doing what the past generations did and what they focused on and their way of training and the way they taught is now considered obsolete and i really wish you would expand on this yes that's a mistake that many people make in thinking mm -hmm. that whatever is presented or developed now is modern, becomes more effective and powerful, and whatever was done in the past is obsolete and ineffective. Mm. Um, I always like to start this conversation mentioning MMA and the most used um, techniques for finishing to create submission. You have the first one, is the rear naked choke, Hadaka Jime, which you can find in all the old books, both in Brazil and in the United States. The second one is the guillotine, also a variation of Hadaka Jime, which is also found in the old books with different names. Kawaishi calls it Kubi Jime. You have different applications um, of the guillotine. And then if you keep going and you look at the, the Katagatame, which is also very popular and Jujigatami, the arm lock, and you have um, the triangle, Sankaku. All of these that are top five, top ten, all of them are old techniques. And many times we, we look on Instagram and, and YouTube and we see all these fancy techniques that generate a lot of likes because people like new techniques like kids they love new toys sometimes they might have a very expensive very nice toy and they've had it for many months and then you give them a very cheap <laughs> new toy and they're going to play with the new toy but where are these modern fancy techniques in the statistics of the ufc for example we don't see them what we see are the basic and when you look at takedowns what are the most common takedowns your basic wrestling takedowns, double legs, single legs. And then when it comes to your judo throws, you're going to find the basic ones. Kosotogaki, uh, Ouchigari. These are all techniques that you will find in the manuals from 100 years ago and more. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a fact that the old techniques are the ones that work. Now, obviously, um, one of the great aspects of jiu-jitsu, of judo, of grappling is that it allows for different human beings, different practitioners to express themselves creatively. And then based on their athletic ability and their personal skills, they will find adaptations, variations, different ways to apply these skills. Yeah. And many times the, the, the audience can be a little bit gullible and say, wow, that's amazing, that's a new thing, oh my God, this is a revolutionary. But really, when you, when you study these things for a long time, you notice that it's just that the wheel continues to be reinvented. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they know how to disguise um, these old techniques with, with different elements that might give the impression that they're doing something new, but they're not. You know, some of the biggest names, in, and I'm talking now about the sport specifically. Mm -hmm. um, some of the greatest coaches, the most recognized coaches, if you observe carefully the way they teach, they borrow a lot. The most successful ones, they borrow a lot from the old masters, from the old Japanese books. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's something that I believe that is a, is, a, is a big mistake to believe that what was done in the past is obsolete and only what's done today is um, is good because, as I said, look at the finishing holds used in the UFC. How come they're not all new and modern? If that was the case, you would have a bunch of techniques that were invented in the last 10 years 
and we don't even have one. Hmm. I agree. And also sometimes you do get something that is new and then it works in a very specific context. Once you take it out, once you include, for example, those slaps in combat jujitsu or it's in MMA, you tend to see the flaws. Right. I'll give you an example. Even like the last, I'd say, 10 years or so, the leg lock game has been very, very, very big. Mm -hmm. And even some of the best grapplers made that mistake of getting too comfortable with it. Gary Tonin is easily one of the best. And in MMA, he got too comfortable and he got KO'd because he hung on too, way too much to that one position that he's so good at mm -hmm. in a different context in MMA. But speaking of the old masters, if you look at all the old footage, you can separate that in a self-defense context. You see the photos, you see uh, in the books, the leg locks were done strictly after a takedown and that leg was caught um, when they were down and it is uh, diagonal and they are really incapacitated that way but uh, no one on the street is like on the ground down even ashigarami was being done standing up yes but, that, but that's interesting because mm. when you look at the the old masters from Jigoro Kano to Carlos and Helio Gris mm. they always treated Ju -ju judo slash jiu-jitsu as martial arts mm. they always had in mind above all the preparation for the street mm. nowadays with the development of the sport and, and the specialization in the sportive aspect that is not part of the conversation anymore mm. so that created a, an opening for new techniques to be developed because now you don't have that restriction that was in place. They wouldn't want to do something that would expose them to strikes, that would expose them in a fight. So I can give more examples. You, you, you cited the, some of the leg lock positions, but we can also talk about deep half guard, for example. Mm. Right? That's a, a position, especially when you have under hooks and when you put the arm under the leg, it will expose your face considerably. So you can understand why Back in the 1920s, 1930s, even before that, they were not going to be interested in using something like that. But nowadays, jiu-jitsu is practiced as a sport. Judo is practiced as a sport. For example, the restrictions that you have in judo against double legs and single legs, that would obviously make the defense of judo practitioners against wrestling attacks much weaker because they're no longer practicing that. So if you're going to think about the street, you wouldn't do that. But I'm sure the IJF, when they were considering these rule changes, they were not thinking about street effectiveness of judo practitioners. That was not part of their conversation. So we need to understand that at, at, at some point, both in Japan and in Brazil, that concern for the street disappeared. And that, they, and that allowed for great innovation and great evolution but that doesn't mean that you are moving in the same direction that the old masters were moving. And it doesn't mean that you're improving upon what they were doing. You're just adapting. It's adaptation and you're moving in a different direction. And I'm not even saying that there's something wrong with that. Mm 